This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 693, You Are Not Your Money, by Kristen Wong of thewildwong.com. And I am Dan, your host. I am here every weekday reading to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. And a happy Wednesday to you. Thanks, as always, for being here. And uh, if you didn't know, we have four other podcasts in our little family where we read blogs to you. They are Optimal Living Daily, Optimal Health Daily, Optimal Business Daily, and Optimal Relationships Daily. And you can subscribe to all of them to get a lot more blogs read to you for free. We've also got a couple of interview-style shows now, too. Those are new shows, and you can search for Optimal Living Daily to find those as well. For now, let's get to today's post as we optimize your life. You Are Not Your Money by Kristen Wong of thewildwong.com A few years ago, I lost a job and found myself stress shopping in the middle of the afternoon in the handbag section at Marshall's. Next to me, a woman pulled out a name brand bag with a security tag on it. I couldn't help but notice her tailored top her pencil skirt, her Louboutins. Hair so shiny she could have been in a Pantene commercial. I shifted in my flip-flops and t-shirt and wondered where my life was going. Yeah, I get that, a friend said when I told her how I felt. Jobless, aimless, worthless. You know, sometimes I feel less valuable because literally everyone I know makes more money than I do, she said. It's so easy to derive your self-worth from what you do for a living. The better paying, more prestigious job you have, the more valuable you are as a person. When you say it out loud, it sounds ridiculous and wrong, but it's easy to forget that when you lose a job or you're drowning in debt. Money and mental health. People like to tell you money is just math. It's just numbers. It's a tool, a thing. There's nothing more to it than that. This isn't wrong exactly. It's just an easy thing to say when you're not deciding whether you should sell your car to pay for rent this month. Money makes the world go round. And if you have it, you have the ability to do that. When you don't, you feel utterly powerless. Sure, money is just a tool, but as financial therapist Amanda Clayman once put it, money also has symbolic properties. Money can measure your success, hard work, and a keen ability to negotiate. It can also measure the degree of luck and privilege you've experienced in your life. Clayman writes, From our early associations with it as children to the legacy we want to leave when we're gone, money is interwoven with the deepest, most meaningful experiences of our lives. If you lack money or you're in debt, then money might symbolize struggle, vulnerability, and fear to you. We shouldn't be so quick to dismiss the symbolism of money. It can have profound consequences. People who commit suicide are eight times more likely to be in debt, for instance. In a study titled How Am I Doing? Researchers looked at how financial well-being affects a person's overall well-being. The research found that, quote, perceived financial well-being is a key predictor of overall well-being, end quote. When you feel awful about your financial situation, your overall mental health suffers. So while money might be just pieces of paper, it's also a force that has a crucial impact on our mental health. Money and identity. We tend to define ourselves by what we do for money. All too often, we build our identity around what we do for a living, how much money we make, and how professionally successful we are. It's easy to do this when the first thing someone asks you is, what do you do? It's easy to do this when there's so much judgment around money. If you're financially struggling, it must be because you've f***ed up and overindulged yourself. As my friend Melanie Lockhart says, it's important to remember that you are not alone. You are not your debt. People think about suicide when they feel like they've run out of reasons to live, writes Dr. Mark Goulston, a suicide-specializing psychiatrist over at Medium. This happens when you feel hopeless, powerless, worthless, and purposeless. My identity was so tied to my job, what I did for money, that when I lost that job, I felt many of those things. And while I never concretely thought about suicide, I did cling on to reasons for living during that time. My husband, my brother, my cat, coffee on rainy mornings, stand-up comedy, warm donuts. I clung to anything that reminded me there is more to life than what I do for money. There is so much more to life, success, and your identity than money. You are not your loan. You are not your job. You are not your net worth. Find ways to feel powerful. When I interviewed Dee Wormuth for an article at The Cut, one of the authors of How Am I Doing? I asked her how people can cope with financial stress once it started to impact their mental health. She told me it comes down to feeling like you're in control of your money, like you're actively managing it. Again, easier said than done, 
but small moves can make a surprisingly big difference. For example, her research found that exercising self-control can be more helpful than people realize. The simple act of saying no to an impulsive purchase can make you feel just a wee bit powerful, and that feeling goes a long way. It's not even saving the $5 at that point. It's about finding small ways to make yourself feel just a tiny bit more power over your money. In that same article, I interviewed Melanie, and she said an important first step is just to look at the numbers. She said, if you need to cry, cry. Scream into a pillow. You will feel emotional, and that is completely normal. Go for a long walk. Don't do anything that first day. Let it sink in for a few days. It seems like a simple first step, but when money symbolizes stress and vulnerability, it's hard to look at your spending and come up with a plan to pay off your debt. It's much easier to just avoid your finances altogether. Making the choice to face the numbers is a small way to feel like you have power. You made the decision. You're managing this. Try not to beat yourself up. Finally, I think it's important to forgive yourself for the past. When you're drowning in student loan debt, you might beat yourself up for going to an expensive school. When you're struggling to pay your mortgage, you might beat yourself up for buying a house. All these beatings make it nearly impossible to see the solutions that may exist, to find the light at the end of the tunnel. Worse, research suggests that dwelling on past financial mistakes makes us more likely to repeat them. This is why it's so easy to continue overspending when you've already blown your budget or get trapped in a downward spiral of debt when you're already there, or head to the nearest Marshalls even though you've just lost your job and you know retail therapy isn't the solution. But your situation feels hopeless, so why bother trying to get out of it? This is another reason it's crucial to forgive yourself and stop repeating the story that you are worthless. Finally, if you're not sure where to turn, I've included some resources that might be able to help you feel unstuck. Sometimes your mental health needs a little guidance, and that's okay. You just listened to the post titled, You Are Not Your Money by Kristen Wong of thewildwong.com. And Kristen was actually featured in an interview on one of our other podcasts, Self-Obsessed with Jeff Grace. So you should definitely check that out to learn more about Kristen. And again, if you're interested in hearing even more blogs being narrated to you for free, please do check out our other four narration shows. They are the original show, Optimal Living Daily, Optimal Business Daily, and Optimal Relationships Daily. You can search for the word optimal in the podcast app of your choice and all of those shows should pop right up for you. And that will do it for today. Have yourself a great one and I'll see you back here in tomorrow's show where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Finance Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.